Hey folks, today I'm gonna to show you the three ways that I use track stacks in Logic Pro. So let's jump in. The first way I use track stacks is to layer up different software instruments. So I'll show you what I mean. So I'm gonna create three software instrument tracks. And right now these are all empty tracks. And what I'm gonna do is just load in three different instruments here. So let's start with a synth. Let's go to our retro synth. And I'm just gonna choose a preset. Maybe let's go for this heavy punch bass. So that on its own sounds like this. And let's move over to our next empty track. So let's go to instrument. Let's give alchemy a try. Maybe we'll stick with uh, the bass. Let's make this a synth bass. And let's go fat and bright. And let's try this bright punchy synth. So this one on its own sounds like this. So now we have kind of a more brighter punchy synth as well as a bit of a more sub punchy bass. I'm gonna close this. And for our last instrument, why don't we try the Mellotron. Okay, so now we've got three instruments loaded up. So now it's time to create the track stack. So to do that, I'm gonna click on the first track, hold down shift, click on the last one, and that's gonna highlight all my tracks. And now I'm gonna right click and go to create track stack. And now you'll see the option here of either creating a folder stack or a summing stack. And a folder stack, as you can see here, is used to organize your tracks. Now, a summing stack can also be used to organize your tracks, but it has a few more features that you'll see in a second. So I recommend that you always use summing stack. There's no reason not to. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit create. And now here you'll see at the top here, it says sum one and we can rename this to whatever we'd like. So I can call this, for example, synth stack. And now there's a little arrow here too, which I can click to close my stack or open it. And you can see all my individual instruments here. So now I can still trigger my instruments individually. But if I go up here, and have it record enabled on the stack, now it's gonna trigger everything in that stack at once. So now you have a bit of a hybrid multi-instrument where you can trigger a bunch of different instruments, but all in one go. So that's the first way I use track stacks. Now I'm gonna open a new session to show you the second way I use track stacks. So the second way I like to use track stacks is to actually organize my session. So here you see my film composing template. And as you can see, I have quite a few tracks in here. We're up to 82 tracks, including the master. So track stacks help me organize this big template with a lot of different instruments. So what I've done here is create a different track stack for each group of instruments. So you see here, I have all my strings, have one track stack. So anytime I'm not using the strings, I can just minimize this and that gets rid of a whole lot of tracks. Same with my brass, my woodwinds, my piano, synth, and so on and so on. So if I close all these down, now I have a much more manageable session. And anytime I'm working on a particular instrument, I can just open that up and record in my piano, for instance, without having to look at all 80 something tracks all at once. And now I'm gonna move on to my final session to show you the third way that I use track stacks. Now in this session, I'm using track stacks once again to help organize my session, but I'm also using them as a mix tool. So again, you can see here that we have quite a few tracks. So if I were to open all of these up, 
you can see we're working with a lot of tracks. So again, the track stacks just make it a lot easier to work in the session. But in addition to that, it's also helping me in my mix stage. So here I've created a track stack for all my drum tracks. So what's actually happening, if I open up my mixer, you'll see here under my drum stack, the input is bus four. And all the outputs of all my drum tracks are outputting out of bus four. So all the drums are getting sent to this one track. So I've done some processing on all the individual mics, so my kick and snare, for example. But having the track stack also allows me to do some processing on all of the drums at once because they're all getting sent to this bus four, this stack. So if I solo my drum stack, you're just gonna hear the drums and maybe a little bit of bleed from the other instruments. So now that everything's sending here, now I can, for example, put a compressor on the entire drum kit, like I've done here. So now I can dial in just a little bit of compression to help glue all the drums together. So you can hear how that just adds a little bit of punch and just helps gel everything together. Now, in addition to be able to process the entire stack, I can also do volume automation on the entire stack as well. So if I go back to my range and open my automation, so if, for example, I wanted to boost the drums just in one part, instead of having to boost every single mic of the drums and make sure I boost each mic the same amount so it stays consistent, all I have to do is simply boost the track stack here. So let's say this section I wanted to boost, then I would just do that. And so now, since all the drums are getting sent to this track stack, they're all gonna get louder in this section here. Or if I want to make it quieter, I can do that. Or a fade, a ramp up, anything you'd like. So it really comes in handy for mixing when you're mixing instruments that have a lot of different microphones or a lot of different tracks involved. So once again, the three ways that I use track stacks are number one, to create multi-layered instruments, number two, to help organize my sessions, and lastly, for mixing, either to process a whole group of tracks or to apply automation to a whole group of tracks as well. If you found any other ways to use track stacks, please let me know in the comments. And don't forget to download your free Logic Pro X hotkey cheat sheet. I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one.